So if we're going to talk about unraveling, one of the first things we need to do is talk about reweaving the relationship between patient and everyone else who is around him or her. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, my parents, my mom's now 86 and my father's 90, um, went to get their shingle shots. My mother got hers and my father, and you have to remember, he's a surgeon, so there's a certain amount of arrogance that goes with it. My father was pissed off that Medicare wouldn't cover a shingle shot, so he didn't get it. He just thought, damn it, it's my, their responsibility to cover it, and they should cover it, and though I'm not going to get it. So guess what happened? My father got shingles, but what got him into trouble was his unraveling that it was all about himself. And that vaccinations, which I believe harken into sort of the new American scientific edge of illiteracy, his undoing almost became it's all about me. Now, you could argue that everything I've just told you happens to be that the patient gets to say, it's all about me, it's all about me, and that we have to be patient-centric. And I would argue that that's true, as long as the doctor and nurse and family honor it. But it's not OK when it's all about you and you sacrifice those around you. So here's a scientifically literate physician who, on the stance of a $200 bill, refused to get a shot, and in so doing, took his wife down a very perilous path, hurt his family, and um, hurt himself the most. Which brings me back to one thing I want to talk about as we talk about the unraveling. For those of you who have ever seen me speak on air, and I recognize that I'm in a part of the country where this is not always a popular statement, I am an unabashed believer in vaccines. We have allowed unscientific rumors to trump scientific dogma and a very bad, dishonest publication about measles, mumps, and rubella being tied to autism has in fact now undermined what I believe was the greatest scientific breakthrough in our lives, and that's vaccinations. So as we unravel the craziness of the healthcare system, payment, HIPAA, scientific technology, and put the patient center first, without latex but touching each other, without with allowing patients to understand that death and dying is a part of life, to allow patients an exit if they want to. As those in this room have grandchildren and will soon have grandchildren, we have to get this country scientifically back on track and undo the unraveling of science when it comes to immunizations. I believe, and I believe that everybody in this room, or you wouldn't be at this conference, believes that public health means something. And good public health means that we all give a little for the sake of the common good. And if 90% of our population has to be vaccinated in order that we don't see measles, mumps, rubella, outbreaks of whooping cough, and what I fear could be polio lurking right around the corner, then we have a responsibility to take that unraveling and put it back together. We have a lot of work to do. But the work isn't necessarily in the next great invention. It's in talking plain. I grew up in the Midwest. We're meeting here in the Midwest. And one of the things Midwesterners do is we talk plain. We may speak our minds. We may not expect to be part of a popularity contest. We may say things that others don't agree with. But we still, at the end of the day, expect to shake hands, get a beer, or break bread together. But we talk plain. So as we see medicine unravel, I think there's a call on us to remember that the patient is at the epicenter of everything we want and do, whether it's architecture, high tech, or basically what I believe increasingly is the call to be low tech, and that's to touch each other. 
And we have a responsibility to stop the unraveling of bad science and increasingly to call on people not to be scientifically illiterate, but to ask our schools to put responsible science back in, to talk about evolution, to talk about science, to talk about reproduction, the difference between love and sex, the responsibility of, of replication, and then how we as human beings take care of ourselves and our neighbors and our communities so that at the end of the day, that unraveling becomes a nat different national tapestry, which is something that I think we can absolutely and should do. Thank you very much.